Hello, everybody. My name is Palm, and welcome to welcome back to my channel. So, I reacted to Euphoria season two not too long ago. Um, I think you already. I think you've probably seen it. By the time you're watching this video, I'm not entirely sure yet. It's not even up yet. I'm like mass recording a whole bunch of videos just because it makes it easier. You know, set myself up for success. I'm trying to stay consistent and uploading on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So trying to be consistent. Plus, I'm also uploading two times a week on my second channel, my lifestyle channel, on Mondays and Fridays. Um, so... You know that is you know that's five videos a week it's almost like that's like 20 like around like 20 videos a month so it's a lot but i'm trying to stay consistent because consistency is key so yeah bear with me um but so when i was watching season two of before yeah i literally didn't remember a single thing from season one i don't even know if i finished season one so I thought it'd be really good for me to actually watch a season one recap of Euphoria so that way I can just, you know, re, you know, refresh my mind, you know, kind of like figure out what's going on, like maybe see new things, new stuff. I thought about rewatching Euphoria season one, but I just don't really have the time to do that. Um, so I thought recap would be good instead. Also it'd be good for all of you guys who have not, uh, who don't remember season one of Euphoria or maybe haven't seen it yet and get a little quick recap of it. So, um, this is by Evelyn Dar. So, link, I, as always, the original videos are in the link description down below if you want to check them out and watch it yourself at your own pace, whatever. But anyways, without further ado, let's get into this video. Is up YouTube, it's your girl Evelyn, and today I will be recapping season one of Euphoria. And as always, I will be spoiling the entire season. Euphoria deals with some very adult themes, yep. and there will be mention of domestic violence, drug use, self-harm, mental illness, assault, and lots and lots of cursing. So if that doesn't sound like your cup of tea, no hard feelings, and I'll catch you on the next one. For everyone else, Please proceed with caution. The first character we meet is Rue Bennett, mm -hmm. our not so reliable narrator. Rue is just your average 17 year old. She lives with her Except mom, Leslie, she and is little a sister Gina, and she's also fresh out of rehab. I spent a good portion of the summer before junior year in rehab. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. On our way home from rehab, Rue spots manic pixie dream girl Jules. <laughs> Jules is new in town, transgender, and Rue's future BFF. Nate Jacobs is the popular star quarterback who is also a sociopath. Yeah. He's also in a toxic on again off again relationship with aspiring boss bitch Maddie Perez. Uh, she the is ride or a die boss. Bonnie to his crazy as hell Clyde. Maddie's also the unofficial leader of a low key version of the plastics. There's Kat, the overweight one with low self esteem. There's Cassie, the hypersexual one with low self esteem. There's this girl who has no plotline, but really high self-esteem for some reason. Then there's Lexi, who's not really in the group, but she's Cassie's sister, so there you go. <laughs> we also have- She is not McKay, holding back. A football star who graduated last year, but still hangs around high school juniors, which is not weird at all. McKay's dating Cassie, which is not legal. Oh but yeah, no I forgot the about that. Mentions it, so I'll just shut up. Last but not least, our local drug dealers and brothers, Fezco and Ashtray. I thought your ass was dead. I thought you had Asperger's, so I realized you're just a prick. <laughs> this is a pickle in the street. Y'all come and go. I'm just trying to stack my cash, pay off our mortgage. So what the f*** you want? <laughs> and now, on with the show. Break on that beat, go and pray. It's the end of summer and McKay is throwing a back to school party for his 17 year old friends, which again, not weird at all. Everyone's excited. Yeah, it's even super sus. Plastics. You're hot as f Nate's a loser. Who cares? He's not a loser. He's a d All dicks are losers. Duh. Look, bottom line, y'all need to walk into this party like your pussy costs a million dollars. Rue, 
fresh out of rehab, immediately goes to Fez for drugs because she's an addict. Yeah, and while no Rue is getting high at McKay's party, Jules is across town getting laid by Dominant Daddy, a dude she met on Grinder. <laughs> After lying about her age, they have sex while Dominant Daddy films it. Afterward, Wait, he filmed it? His party, where the rest of the gang are already knee-deep in their respective dramas. Nate and Maddie's relationship is in the off-again position. So after spending all night trying to make each other jealous, Maddie has sex with a random guy in the pool. So I think it's safe to say she won. Elsewhere in McKay's mansion of a house, Kat decides it's time she lost her virginity. Like, how much? Oh, I remember this. What? How much of a slut are you? Why'd you come find out? Meanwhile, Cassie's busy making googly eyes at the love of her life, McKay. But McKay's all grouchy because earlier, Nate the Snake showed him a video of Cassie having sex with one of her exes. Oh, and this Why are they all just shirtless hanging on the couch? Who are you? I'm Jules. I'm a friend of. A friend of a friend of who's? Cause you're not my. Somebody better speak up, or this bitch is gonna get f***ed up. Yo, 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 yo. You wanna f***ing hurt me? I'm fucking kidding. Not the f***ing. What the f***ing your problem? <laughs> Rue is impressed by the way Jules handled Nate, so she introduces herself, and the two girls leave the party together, Let's go, Jules. have a sleepover, and are best friends by morning. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Oh, and remember Dominant Daddy? Turns out he's not just Jules's daddy. Yeah. <sighs> Nate's dad, aka Dominant Daddy, aka Cal Jacobs, has been having sex with young men and trans women for years, and he has the footage to prove it. Footage that Nate found when he was a kid, which may or may not have something to do with his complicated sexuality. You want some some f***ing attention? So I'll give you some f***ing attention. I think he's just After a psycho. Party, Maddie is that, where, is that the route that they're going sex in the pool. towards with Nate? And that she must have blacked out. So naturally, Nate finds pool That sex he's guy, like a, a closeted guy. And beats the hell out of him. Not only did you rape a girl, but you raped a minor. And they hurt you. No, 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 no. Yeah, and you're not going to press charges because if you do, you're going to go to jail for a lot longer than I will. Meanwhile, Kat's dealing like, with is that where they're going with Nate? Is that why he's so psychotic? Because like Turns out, the guy he she is her virginity to filmed them having sex, and now the video is online. That he's like closeted. That blends Roy and Troy, McKay's little brothers, and that with he's, child porn um, charges if they don't take the video down. I don't want my life to be ruined, and I'm sure you don't want to end up on a sex offender list. Kat, you know I'm not a sex offender. It's child pornography. That he's like um. We're all under eighteen. Chill. What am I trying to say? Troy, Google it. Roy and Troy comply, but not before Kat's sex tape is uploaded to Pornhub, where it gets tons of views. And I don't know what I'm trying Kat to say. An idea. I said that when the video is over. Day of knowing each other, Rue and Jules are now connected at the hip, and Rue is developing feelings for Jules, which sucks because Jules has just started texting with Shy Guy 118. Meanwhile, Rue has a terrifying encounter with Mouse, Fez's drug supplier. Mouse forces Rue to try fentanyl, an opioid more potent than morphine. Oh, no. Thankfully, Fez saves Rue from Mouse and calls Jules to pick her up. And we can't forget about McKay and Cassie. They're still together, but McKay's still grumpy that Cassie's a sexual being. So naturally, <laughs> he pressures her into sending news. Oh, no. And because we haven't talked about Nate the Snake for a while, now's probably a good time to mention that Nate is actually Shy Guy 118. Yeah, I do remember that. Kat is now a full-fledged cam girl. She's making bank and gaining confidence, and honestly, good for her. She's even developing a crush on Ethan, a nice guy who really likes her. Meanwhile, Rue has recovered from her family. Yeah, that, that, that's the one thing people didn't like um, that Kat was doing because she was like 17. It's underage, I think, so it's like child pornography, literally what you just said. So While people Rue are just like, yeah, it's not weird that you're just like having her up. busy falling in love with Shy Guy 118. Eventually, their texting leads to sexting, and Jules asks Rue to take some sexy photos of her for Shy Guy 118. Is that a high? Yeah. Like, 
I'm hot enough that you'd want to f me, I'm like cute. <laughs> Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show stopping, spectacular, never the same. After the photo shoot, so are they going with Nathan? He's just like an angry, closeted uh, guy. So, so he just like lashes out on people. Entire ass pharmacy on Jewel's kitchen counter and jets. After popping a pill, Rue ends up at an NA meeting, and a nosy dude named Ali calls her on her BS. Just like you're gonna have to make peace with the fact that you could be responsible for some shit like that and then get up in front of a whole group of people who are struggling with the same issues and lie about being clean. I don't know what you're talking about. Damn, Damn. A whole lot of realness. Meanwhile, Jules and Nate are texting constantly. So constantly that Maddie the baddie notices. She snoops in Nate's phone, and although he deleted the text messages, he failed to delete dozens of dick pics. Maddie keeps the intel to herself, well, for the time being, and Nate presses Jules for a real life meeting. You have to meet this dude? It's like a fucking deserted lake in the middle yeah, of nowhere. Yeah, that okay? what I thought was really stupid. Out of everyone in the world, I wanted to tell you. I thought you'd be happy. Yeah, but While it's all of stupid. This is going on, Cassie and McKay are still dating for some reason, and Cassie's mom becomes obsessed with Cassie getting pregnant. Which sounds like some heavy-handed foreshadowing to me. <laughs> Cassie and McKay go to a frat party and have sex in a bathroom, so there you go. Eventually, Rue and Jules make up from their earlier squabble, then this happens. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I should go. A tortured Rue goes to Fez and begs for drugs, but Fez refuses. Then Rue has an epic meltdown before hitting rock bottom and calling Ali. Uh, Fez is like the best. It's carnival time I love Fez. And the whole gang's there. Jules is Ooh, I do remember the cat. carnival episode. As an ashtray are setting up their pretzel stand slash drug stand. Rue's spending some quality time with little sis Gia and Lexi. Cassie, of course, is with McKay, and Nate and Maddie are up to their usual shenanigans. Yo, why are you dressed like a hooker? <laughs> Jesus Christ, Maddie, I'm here with my parents. Go ahead, it's the carnival. Go home, get changed, and come back looking like a person. Eventually, Jules and Ruth yeah. find each other, and after an adorable Made that moment, outfit. they hug it out. Meanwhile, McKay and Cassie are still together, except when Nate asks McKay if they're together. Dude, you guys like in a relationship? No, we just chill. Oh, no. Are you just chilling? Yeah, we chilling. Oh, my oh, sweet, no. sweet child. This leads to a fight, and McKay makes Cassie feel bad for being a human girl who likes sex. Yeah. He leaves, and Cassie There's meets nothing up wrong with that. off Maddie. They score some Molly, and Maddie tells Cassie all about the dick pics on Nate's phone. Elsewhere at the carnival, Kat's having a great time with a nice guy, Ethan. Until... Kat dips on Ethan and has sex with a carnival employee, which seems to make her feel better. Oh, I remember that. And Jules finds out what we've all known since episode one. Who's that? Nate Jacobs' dad. That's his dad? That's Nate's dad. No f***ing way! No way. <laughs> Back to Cassie and Maddie. They're hopped up on Molly and ready to make some bad decisions. Cassie makes out with a random guy and rides the carousel. I mean, I remember she this, really this rides the yeah. carousel. Maddie calls Nate's mom the C-word, then tips over Cal's award-winning pot of chili. Afterward, Nate grabs Maddie and chokes her, but then they, like, immediately make up. So, yeah, I don't know. It's No, I think she got freaked out, reveal. right? Shy Guy 118 and Jules finally meet. You thought there was going to be sweet, After the but kiss, like, Nate, no. Psychopathic Snake threatens Jules with child porn charges. But why? Okay, but why? so Nate knows his dad had sex with Jules because he still watches his dad's home movies. But instead of, you know, minding his own damn business, Nate blackmails Jules into not exposing his dad, which she had no intention of doing anyway. So, good job, Nate. After the meeting, Jules runs to Rue, but won't tell her what happened. Instead, they get into bed together, and then this happens. Ooh. Uh-oh. Rue is in love with Jules, and Jules is maybe in love with the idea of Rue being in love with her. 
They get matching tattoos, they hang out with each other's parents, yeah. and they share Jules... body counts. Rue is sober and thriving. All Jules, Jules is not like Rue. Which is That's a lot true. Of pressure. Okay. Four times. Rue seems really good. Yeah, she does. It's called the view, you know. I I think she like it was a way too much pressure like having like which is understandable. Well, the next day at school, Maddie's bruises are discovered. Nate is arrested for assault, suspended from school, and kicked off the football team. It's it's a lot of pressure, you know, like Maddie having Nate someone's like this fate. Romeo and Juliet thing where they're sneaking around to see each other because their families don't want like them to rely on you, you know. Yada yada yada. As for the rest it's of the game, Cat is still freezing out nice guy Ethan and having sex with random dudes and feeling really proud of herself afterward. And Cassie and McKay are still together because apparently nothing will break them up. Yeah. Everybody here has got needs therapy. It's time for Daniel's Halloween party. Who's Daniel? This guy. <laughs> and Jules are dressed as Leo and Claire, but the night gets off to a rocky start. Every time I feel good, I think it'll last forever. Wow. <laughs> um, you, you look f***ing amazing. Thank you. I don't really feel it, but, you know. Ooh. Jules Ooh. wastes no time in getting wasted. And it's obvious to Rue that something is very, very wrong. We then find out what Nate, the blackmailing psychopathic snake, has been up to since his fall from grace. Nate prints out Jules's nudes, makes Tyler confess to choking Maddie at the carnival because if he doesn't, Maddie will tell the police Tyler raped her at McKay's party and assault is a lesser charge than rape. Nate blackmails Jules into lying to the police, telling them she witnessed Tyler choking Maddie at the carnival. Nate's evil plan works. I remember He's that. He's vindicated and shows up to Daniel's party with Maddie on his arm. As Jesus for the rest of the gang, Christ, that guy's Cassie terrible. almost hooks up with Daniel, but her love for McKay stops her. Yeah. Unfortunately, at the end of the episode, we see her staring at a box of tampons, so there you go. Our girl Kat finally makes up with Ethan, but just when they're about to, you know, Ethan arrives a bit early, so Kat, feeling rejected, has sex with Daniel instead. Huh? Eh? Angels didn't go to school for a full week. And even though I sent her about 50 texts, she didn't respond. Happy Halloween! I could tell something bad had happened. While Rue's busy figuring out what's wrong with Jules, Cassie gives McKay the good news. I'm pregnant. What? And he's like, well, I am I not the father. Pregnant. Peace out. They decide not to go through with the pregnancy, and by they, I mean McKay. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, cam girl Kat is about to hit a new tax bracket. She's charging 300 bucks an hour and talking to dudes that sound like Jigsaw. You in danger, girl. A manic Rue finally comes up with a theory about what's wrong with Jules, and although it's not 100% accurate, she does get it right about Nate the Snake. So she asks Fez to scare Nate away from Jules. But oh. Nate is literally a Bond villain. After Fez he's in two him, makes a lot of he sense. drops an anonymous tips to the cops about Fez's drug empire, and Fez and Ashtray get raided and have to flush their merchandise. Jules oh. eventually climbs out of her Nate-induced funk and goes to visit her old friends in the city. She parties hard and hooks up with a girl named Anna, but Nate is never far from her mind. Back home, Rue's manic state comes crashing down, and she becomes so depressed she can't get out of bed, not even to pee, which leads to a kidney infection. Oh, that's so really sad. Rue's in the hospital recovering from her kidney infection, but things are finally beginning to look up because Jules is back in town. She comes clean with Rue about Nate the blackmailing snake and also admits to hooking up with Anna. And Rue's like, Unbreak my but Rue's heartbreak can wait because it's winter formal time and everyone's excited. JK, everyone's life is a mess. Maddie and Nate break up because during sex, Nate has trouble getting an erection. And Maddie's like, you are gay. And Nate almost chokes her again. Oof. 
then disappears into the bathroom to, you know, read the Bible. Maddie steals a DVD from his room because why not? And if you've been paying attention, you've probably already figured out that the DVD is Jules and Dominant oh, no. Daddy's sex tape. And now Maddie has it. Sometime later, I didn't know that. Nate and his dad have a fight. And Nate calls his dad the F word before banging his own head repeatedly against the floor and sobbing. Elsewhere in town, Cassie's mom and sister take her to get an abortion. And it's never actually stated, but it seems like she and McKay have finally broken up. Remember when Fez and Ashtray got raided and had to flush all their drugs and now they have no way to pay Mouse? In a scene straight out of Breaking Bad, Fez robs the shady doctor who supplies Mouse with the drugs that Mouse in turn supplies to Fez. What the hell? But things don't quite go according to plan. Oh no. After beating down the doctor, Fez pays Mouse what is essentially Mouse's own money. And just when it seems like he might get away with it... So now that we're all caught up... I didn't check the money? Formal time. I mean, why would they? Kat finally realizes that Ethan is a genuine guy who actually likes her. Cassie is excited to not have a man for the first time in forever. And just chills all night. I'm rooting for Cassie. Lexi. And in a shocking turn of events, Maddie and Nate spend most of the night trying to make each other jealous. Eventually, they end up dancing and discussing how terrible and toxic they are together. Yeah. And finally, our girls, Rue and Jules, are having the time of their lives. Well, kind of. Jules is texting Anna every five seconds and runs off to the bathroom to send her some pics. Rue gets all jealous and follows Jules to the bathroom. Why don't you kiss me? I kiss you. No, why don't you like kiss, kiss me? Um, I mean, do you want me to like kiss, kiss you? I want you to want to kiss me so bad that you don't even ask. Okay, fuck it. Let's dance. <laughs> Later, Rue and what? Jules have a heart to heart and Jules admits to being in love with Anna. She also admits to being in love with Rue. Then Rue's like, What if you just fucking left? Like, I mean, what if we just, we just fucking left this dance and we went home, grabbed a bunch of our shit, and just went to the city. What if we just fucking left? Long story short, when they arrive at the train station, Rue backs okay, out, yeah. but Jules leaves. Now, I won't even mm. attempt to describe the last 15 minutes of episode eight. But I highly recommend watching it if you haven't, and I'll link it in the description box below. But basically, the show ends with Rue relapsing. And that's it for the recap. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, that was a good recap, but I feel like I still don't know anything. <laughs> yeah, it was a really good recap. It was just like, there's just so much stuff that happens in the show. But like, I feel like I have a good understanding though that I should be able to um watch season two I might maybe I should I might go back and like watch a couple of episodes of season one just so I could probably have a better grasp of it but like a lot happened so the thing with Nate are they making Nate like a like a are they leaning into the stereotype that like like most um homo like like all well my like the stereotype that like all homophobic men are like actually closeted uh, closeted like uh like gay people they're like leaning into that stereotype is that what it is is that what they're going with Nate like I because it's like pretty clear in season one that he is struggling with that or at least is he's struggling with that knowing that his father you know um is uh gay you know so uh or like I, I'm saying gay as an encompassing, like, as in a general term, because I think his father's, like, probably, like, bisexual, but I'm saying gay is, like, an overarching, like, term uh, to describe them all. Um, so is that, is that what, the, is that, like, what they're, um, was it what they're, like, going with? Like, that, like, stereotype? Because, I mean, it's pretty, like, it is really interesting to see, honestly, though, like, because it's clear that he, I don't know if he's, like, I don't know if he's, like, in denial or... If he's just like embarrassed or something for some for some reason, um, 
I don't know. I don't know why he would be embarrassed. I seems it seems like people, his friends or everybody seems to be pretty like open. I guess. Well, I guess they seem pretty like open minded for the most part. Like they're all dealing with a whole bunch of stuff and they're all doing their own things, but they don't. None of them seem like you know homophobic. So uh, also it could just be also I think a lot of it probably has to do with his family life, right? His father doesn't seem like the best. And seem like he has a good role model, and he found those videos at like a young age. And I'm sure he didn't really know what to think about it. So yeah, it's honestly really sad actually thinking about it. Like I know Nate's sad, like is this complete trash, and he's just an absolute. He's really. I mean, he has more problems going on, going with him than him like may or not be like closeted. But like, it's it's just it's also really sad. Honestly, it's like really really sad. Um, but like that Nate is like actually like super struggling because I kind of forgot about the episode two when he was calling his father like the F word like banging it against the, the 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 floor and he was like really like struggling like he's like actually upset you know that his father I don't know if they said that his father is is or might be gay or that like he like had to find out that way. I don't know. I don't know. It, uh, Nate char Nate's character honestly is really interesting. It's really, really interesting. I actually would like in season two that we do like more of a deep dive into like Nate's psyche. I actually am very interested in, in learning what's going on in his head. I really, it would be really cool if there's like an episode na narrated by Nate just to know like what's going on inside of his head. Because actually, like I, I hate like I know everyone doesn't like Nate. I hate Nate, but actually this recap made me want to actually learn more about Nate and know learn more about like what is going on with him. I don't know. Anyways, let me know what you guys think. Um I don't know like I don't know for all the people who are more who are more into euphoria than I am like um like am I wrong about like them like what do you guys think? Like are they going down like the stereotype of like you know well, I don't know if he is home if he is Nate is homophobic. It it, it kind of seems like that is like is it kind of seems like he's taking like the on um, the defensive. He's being on the defensive at the very least uh, about um, like gay and transgender transgender people. So to me, it seems like he is like homophobic and maybe transphobic, but. I think it's more like he's that way because he's being defensive about it because he's like not sure of himself. So that's my honesty, my opinion on it. But let me know like what you guys think or like if I'm missing something or if that's not the case. I want to know your comments. Um, so that's gonna be for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed and turn on post notifications to get notified whenever I upload a new video. And follow me on my social links are down below to see more of my face. And that's going to be it. I'll see you next time. Bye.